Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And it's going to be a rather long video today because I'm going to be doing an ice retention test on the 40 quart cold E cooler. Uh, sharp reviewers are going to see, look at this and say, well, that's not a cold E cooler because cold E does not sell white coolers. They sell tan coolers about the color of my shirt. Well, this one is tan. There's the original tan color. I painted mine white. It's one of the tips that I use to make my ice last longer. And I start, wanted to do this test before I actually brought it out here in the field and see how it performed, because the last thing I want to do is have it run out of ice before I expect it to. And I did a couple things that are going to help retain that ice. Primarily, first off, I painted it white. I cover it with a towel and keep the towel damp to help dissipate any heat that does get into it. Uh, I made my own block ice at home in my freezer, which starts out at about 22 degrees below zero, so I've got good uh, cold ice in there. But I also did a couple things that are going to hurt that ice retention. First off, I started the, the test on a Monday when the forecast was going to be in the hundreds for the next four or five days. So I thought that would be a good stress test for this cooler to see whether it would actually handle uh, high temperatures. I also set it, although, on, although I set it on the north side of my house, I also set it in an area where it would receive direct sunshine for about an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes in the late morning. So I thought that would be a good test to uh, kind of balance it out instead of trying to come up with a best case scenario, actually do some things that uh, make mistakes, so to speak. Uh, I started out by chilling it with cold water out of my tap and about a gallon and a half of ice out of my freezer just to get it down to temperature. Then I put the block ice in. I put in uh, three bottles of refrigerated soda and three bottles of recycled Gatorade containers full of ice. And then I put in 16 Ziploc snack size bags. Eight of them were filled with some refrigerated water and eight of them were filled with frozen water. And I dyed those with a little bit of blue, blue food coloring so I could tell the difference. And then twice a day I would go out, I would open up the cooler, see how the ice block was doing. And then I'd remove one of the uh, Ziploc bags of either ice or water. And I would do that in the morning and the evening. And then about every day I would go out, maybe sometimes twice a day, and I would take one of the drinks out. And I thought the uh, Ziploc bags of water would um, simulate actual food products that I have in the cooler. It was just a test. Instead of using actual food, I thought the water would be a good substitute and taking that out. And I also took the drinks out every once in a while. And everything is going to be here in the video about the temperature and, and the time that... Uh, I did all this stuff, and so hopefully this will give you a good idea of how well the cold E40 quart cooler will perform in ice retention. So let's go ahead and get started with the test, and we'll see how we did. I would be happy with uh, five days out of it, be ecstatic with six, and if I could get seven days of ice out of it during this stress test, I'd be just absolutely ecstatic. So let's go ahead and get started, and we'll see how we did. The first thing I did was I put about um, three or four gallons of tap water, which my tap water at this time of year is usually in the low 60s. I think it was 62 degrees. I also put in about a gallon and a half of scrap ice that was in my freezer, just a, a conglomerate of different uh, ices that I've uh, accumulated over the several months, and let that set for several hours, and that brought the temperature of the water down to 38 degrees. So I started out with a 38 degree interior of the cooler itself. At that point, I put in a block of ice that I made in a bucket in my deep freeze. It takes up about two-thirds of the total width of the cooler. There is some space around the sides and along the top and, and uh, at the ends for a little bit of more ice and product. Uh, but this ice started out about 22 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. I then put in three frozen containers of recycled Gatorade bottles that had been frozen with ice, and I thought oh, that would be a good test of drinking water. I then put in three refrigerated uh, soft drinks, very small ones. I think these are like 12 ounce. Those were coming out of the refrigerator. I then put in eight Ziploc bags that had frozen water in them that I dyed blue so I could tell them the difference between the ice or the water that I put in. Here I put in eight containers full of refrigerated water and that hopefully simulates a food product and what I'm going to do is slowly pull those out. I then completely filled it up, the rest of it, with uh, cube ice out of my kitchen's freezer and uh, then set it outside. I set it up on two 2x4s. Two you can see here in the bottom of the image, the 2x4s I set it up. I set it up on end. Um, I'm going to start this uh, test on a day when we're supposed to be getting temperatures close to 100 degrees for the following week. So I thought that would be a good acid test 
a good uh, stress test for this cooler. I also covered it with a couple of white bath towels that I just went down to the store and bought. They're like $3 a piece. And I'm going to keep them wet, but I'm, I'm going to try to do this as close to an actual field situation as I can. I'm going to put water in this ice cream bucket and let it acclimate to the air temperature. I'm not going to be using cool water from my tap because I may not have access to cool water when I'm out in the field. And I'm going to keep this uh, towel as, as wet as I can and use that to help evaporate some of the heat that uh, could accumulate on or in the cooler, kind of like a uh, swamp cooler type of, uh, of effect, or you know, when you sweat, when the sweat evaporates, it takes the heat away. Uh, this photograph was taken about 11 o'clock in the morning, and I set this on the north side of my shed, and it does receive a little bit of sunshine for about an hour, hour and a half in the morning. So I thought that would be a good uh, test to do instead of trying to keep it completely in the shade. So, uh, after eight hours outside, you can see that it was about 94 degrees and things were still looking quite good inside. In uh, 24 hours, the Tuesday morning, it was 80 degrees in the morning and uh, some of the uh, cube ice had melted, but um, not, not all that bad. I didn't think it was that bad. Um, 32 hours on Tuesday evening, you can see that it's 88 degrees and now you're getting down to where you can uh, see a lot of the cube ice has uh, uh, melted. Keep in mind that I'm also removing at this time some of the bags of water and or ice to simulate me taking food products and every once in a while I'll take one of those uh, drinks out as well. All the, this will be in the description below in very much detail. Uh, 48 hours in, it's almost 80 degrees first thing in the morning. And you can see that a lot of the cube ice has melted now and some of the block ice is starting to melt. And again, I'm slowly taking out some of these little Ziploc bags of water. Uh, 56 hours in, it's uh, 96 degrees. And now you can see that there's quite a bit of water starting to accumulate. There has been some, you know, some very, very visible melting of that ice, but that block ice is still very, very substantial. 72 hours in, three full days. Uh, it's um, 86 degrees first thing in the morning, and now some of the uh, Ziploc bags are starting to float in the ice. There's still a little bit of cube ice left here and there, just depending on where it ended up. Um, but like I say, at this point I decided to put in a layer of Reflectix to kind of help things along because this is something I'm actually going to do out in the field. 80 hours in, ah, 102 degrees. That's a scorcher of a day. And I still have a good chunk of ice in there. I would hope, I'm thinking at this point, it's, it's looking pretty good to possibly make it for seven days. Um, 96 hours in, it's uh, about 90 degrees first thing in the morning. And all of the cube ice is pretty much gone, and I'm down to my block ice. You can see that I've taken the sodas out, and I've, uh, you really can't tell it, but a lot of the, uh, like I say, twice a day, I'd open it up once in the morning when I took the picture, once in the evening when I took the picture, and I would take out at least one of those Ziploc bags to simulate me taking out food, a uh, food product in the actual test, in an actual field situation. You can see that the uh, sodas are gone. The ice is still in the Gatorade bottle, so I've left those in there until they completely melt, and then I'll start taking them out. 104 hours in, 98 degrees, again, very scorcher of a day. And I took one of the Gatorade bottles out at this point, and I'm about halfway done with the, uh, the test, but so far it's looking good. I'm, I'm really pleased at this point. I'd be happy with five days. Um, here I am at five days, 120 hours in. It's uh, almost 90 degrees first thing in the morning. And again, you can tell that block ice is significantly down, but I still have plenty of ice in there. Uh, one of the ice packages either leaked or broke, and that's why the, bl the water has the bluish color. So that was kind of a failure on my part to make sure that it didn't leak. At 128 hours, you really can't tell, but it's probably in the mid-90s, 95, 96 degrees. Again, that's why I chose this week to do the test, is so it would be a very hot day to really give it a good uh, stress test. 
and this is what it looks like after 128 hours inside. Of course, I'm, ta I'm leaving the uh, Reflectix in. I'm just taking it out to take the photograph to show you what the ice is looking like. And 144 hours in, uh, get up in the morning, it's uh, about 84 degrees. And again, like I say, the water that I'm using to keep these towels dry, I'm bringing out after I have soaked the towel with the water that's in the ice cream bucket, and then I refill it and set it back outside to let it acclimate towards the air temperature that this cooler is in. 144 hours, I've got just a little bit of ice left. Uh, I'm down to a couple of uh, packages of, of water, and there's still one Gatorade bottle there with water in it. And 152 hours. Yeah, we're getting close to a week now. It, first thing in the morning, it's still 90 degrees first thing in the morning. And you can see I still have a little bit of ice left. And I still have that one Gatorade container left. 168 hours, this was my goal. I'd be happy if I still had ice at this point. This is one full week, 168 hours. This is the following uh, Monday morning after I started my test. It's a little cooler this morning. It's about 70 degrees. And lo and behold, I still have a little bit of ice left in there. Uh, that, that, that just makes me tickle pink. I'm, I'm really satisfied with the way this cooler has performed. I checked the water temperature. It was 41 degrees at this point, and I thought, well, that's still not bad for refrigeration. I thought, wondered how long would it take to get up to about 45, which is really the uh, limit to keeping things from, uh, my personal limit, to keeping things from spoiling. So I thought I'd like to see how long it took to get up to 45 degrees. And at noon, that day, after 176 hours, I was at 44.4. So I decided that was going to be the end of the test. I've gone 176 hours, which is uh, from a Monday morning at 8 o'clock to the following Monday about noon. And I think I still have a viable refrigerator. And if nothing else, 44 degrees would still be a nice refreshing drink of water or even a Coca-Cola. So that was the end of my test at this point. And there you have it. That's my seven day test. I was got seven days of ice out of it. I was very, very happy with it. Of course, that's under my conditions and, and everything that I'm doing, your mileage is gonna vary because you're gonna have different ice, you're gonna have different products in there, you're gonna be getting in and out of it different, you're gonna have different ambient temperatures. So you're not gonna, I can't guarantee that you will get seven days of ice retention out of this. I also decided to go a little bit longer to see how long it would take the, the water to get up to 45 degrees because even 45 degrees is a good temperature for a refrigerator. So if you have something that will spoil, 45 degrees will still maintain it to a certain degree. And so I decided to let it go until it reached 45 degrees and, and you can see the results. So that makes me very, very happy with my purchase of the cold e-cooler. Um, remember, it's, it's in my conditions that uh, these were ha this happened in. I can't guarantee you that you will get seven days out of it because your conditions are always going to be different. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail. Hey, everybody. Just thought I'd do a little addendum to that uh, video you just saw. I actually did that test about a month ago, and I'm finally getting around to editing that video. In the meantime, I did shoot the beginning and the end of that video on my trip to Wyoming to go see the Great American Eclipse. And so I thought I'd give you the results of that trip. I left on a Monday morning. First thing Monday morning, I loaded up the cooler with the ice and all my food. And a week later, here's what I had left of my block of ice. Now, there's going to be a few differences between this trip and the test that you just saw. First off, I had more ice. Um, in my test, I had about two-thirds of the cooler with ice. This trip, I actually filled it almost completely up. This much was block ice, so I had more ice. And it was also cooler. Uh, the temperatures were only in up to the mid-80s on a couple of days, but mostly it was in the mid-70s to upper 70s, so it was a lot cooler. And so that's definitely impacted it. So I thought I'd show this little video to let you know what it actually did in an actual field situation. And it did very, very well. I didn't actually empty it until I got home. I let most of the water out of my trip home. But even Tuesday morning after eight days, I still had a little bit of ice left. This video just shows you how much ice I had left after seven full days of being out in the field with no access to ice. I didn't add anything. I was just very frugal about getting in and out of it. And uh, I also had a layer of uh, Reflectix between my food product and the ice down below. 
So I hope this uh, helps you understand how the cold E40 quart cooler is going to hold up in an actual field situation. So be safe out there and I'll see you out there on the trail.